When Francis Bach was seven, his childhood, his family, and his culture were stolen. He was captured and enslaved during an Arab militia raid on the Sudanese village of Nimlal. I was tired, but my mind would not let me sleep. In the middle of the night, we passed through a forest and finally stopped in an open area. They took us kids from the donkeys and sat us on the ground. I saw my friend, Kevo, and the girls, Abuke and Nyabo. But we only spoke with our eyes. Everyone kept quiet except two sisters, one about 12, the other younger, who were crying. Through their tears, they said they had seen their father shot and killed, and their mother too. A militia man grabbed the older girl, yelling at her, then trying to shake her into silence. She could not stop crying. He pulled her to the side, put his rifle to her head, and shot her right in the head. He let her go and she crumbled to the ground like an empty sack. I wanted to fly away from this terrible thing, but I was stuck to the ground. My stomach was tightened by what my eyes saw. Her little sister began crying even harder than before. She had seen her mother and father killed, and now her sister was shot before her eyes. She was crazy with crying, and our silence only made her crying seem louder. Suddenly, one of the militiamen moved quickly to her side, and struck her leg hard with his sword. We all stared hard at this terrible thing that no person should ever see. A big sword slicing off this little girl's leg as if it were only a small tree. But I can't remember if she stopped crying. All I remember is the militia man pointing to those girls, saying words that made no sense to me. But the message was clear. If you cried, you would be shot in the head or have your leg chopped off. I clenched my teeth. to block my feelings from coming out. I was afraid my voice would scream and they would kill me. But Bach's spirit was not broken. An Arab truck driver helped him to escape and to reach Khartoum, where Bach was jailed for conspiracy against the government for speaking publicly about his experiences as a slave. Since his escape, Francis has shared his story with students, with senators, with congressmen and women, and has testified before the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, 
He currently lives in Boston, where he continues to speak out against modern day slavery. <laughs> Oh, <sighs> 